Hey guys, welcome to the first, I guess you could say, video in my series of how to start just collecting currency in general. So the first thing I would like to start with would be, I guess, kind of like the beginner friendly things. So if you just got into coin collecting or bill collecting, whichever one, you can start, well at least my advice would be to start off small because you don't want to go in super heavily and start buying for example let's say silver coins gold coins very old currency that's worth hundreds of dollars right because let's just say what if you just don't enjoy it and you realize this but it's already too late because you spent already a hundred dollars on like let's say a silver certificate from 1899 or before right so to see if you really do enjoy this type of like hobby get yourself for example one of these it's just a normal state series quarters it's very inexpensive I think I got it for like what around 10 bucks less maybe doesn't say the price back here your Barnes and Nobles will sell this to you in the hobby section and pretty much what this does is you can just collect some random state coins you see this one isn't even filled out yet and you can pretty much fill it out for free all you have to do is just go to your local bank you know ask for let's say twenty dollars in quarters please or if that's too much for you at that moment say ten dollars in quarters and you start off like that you know um you look through this the states you find the ones you need you put it in and you know if you enjoy it you enjoy it. oh i filled in this year oh i filled in georgia i filled in the denver georgia and all that you know then you'll begin to realize or at least figure out whether or not you actually do enjoy collecting and I do recommend this not just for quarters and if you don't want to start with quarters let's say the quarters you feel I don't know you're using too much money right since there's a bigger den denomination you can start off with pennies you know because one dollar is like around a hundred pennies so if you just say you want let's say five or no let's say ten dollars a week right goes into penny hunting or penny penny roll hunting right you start separating the copper ones from the normal ones you start filling in those books like the penny books you might find a canadian penny in there like those are not common occasions but it is pretty cool finding a canadian penny you might find some wheat pennies you know you'll have fun and if you don't have fun then you only spent ten dollars on coins that you can just return back to the bank and receive your $10 back if you just don't enjoy coin collecting. Now, let's say coins aren't your thing. You just don't like coins. Well, then this um, would come in handy. So let's say you want to start collecting bills instead, right? So I guess my advice would be looking for interesting bills. So let's say you get, let's go to my dollar page. Um, okay, let's say you go bank strap hunting and you get a hundred dollars in one dollar in dollars right you can look for star notes which are a bit rarer than your average you know Joe or you can hunt for let's say um, some interesting trinomials binomials um, birth birth dates I think that's what it's called birth year dates um, interesting dates misprints stuff like that you know and if you find anything else that you find interesting, like, oh, let's say you find a silver certificate in um, a bank roll, I mean a bank strap, and it's like, wow, I found a silver certificate. And you don't spend any money on it because it's bank. It's the money you're just changing. You're exchanging money. So you're not going to lose any money out of it, right? And so let's say you do enjoy this. You have fun. The second step I'd recommend is getting... Um, sleeves for your bills. I just use basic, you know, little plastic sleeves that I put the bill in just to keep an extra layer of protection. There's the flimsy ones like these, and then if you're uh, not hardcore, but if you just want to step it up a bit, there are uh, the more rigid ones like these. These are a bit more rigid, as you can see, they don't bend as much. But to be honest, if you're going to put them in a, in a, currency album like this I do recommend the BCW one it's amazing I have a video about my currency collection or my ah, sorry my banknote collection and 
yeah, it's very nice for storing these. You know, this stores 30 banknotes, but that's not the point. So yeah, if you do enjoy it and you want to store them somehow, I highly recommend a currency portfolio or at least a binder where you can put these in, right? The next thing, which is pretty fun, is getting a small book like this. I think I got it for like five bucks on eBay and just putting foreign coins in there, you know, because foreign coins are pretty cool looking too. So none of these are rare, of course, they're just random. Like these are from the Bahamas, 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 um, Caribbean, Cuba, some Euros, and it just, the list goes on, you know, Venezuela, in, uh, Great Britain, uh, Germany, some other random countries, a token, you know, just have fun with it, you know. Like, you don't have to, just don't spend money on the foreign coins. Just when you go traveling, you know, you find some on the floor and you don't use them, you know, just keep them in here. Don't really exchange them because, like, usually when you come back from a trip overseas, you know, you're probably only going to have, like, what, maybe a few dollars worth of foreign money. You can probably just save it and just put in one of these and, you know, just slowly start amassing a little foreign coin collection. You know, I'm not saying, of course, to like keep if you have like a bunch of money left over, like a hundred dollars left over, to uh, keep it all in foreign, because um, that's not really too smart to do. Like, I would just um, exchange at least ninety dollars or ninety-five dollars worth of it if you can, and then the rest you keep in coins, and then just keep it. But yeah, this is, I guess, you could say the first part. Like, if you're a beginner and you just really don't know whether or not you want to start coin collecting, I highly recommend doing these three things. Either getting, of course, starting off with a small, just a small little booklet like this, focusing on either quarters, pennies, nickels, or dimes, you know, start filling it up, you know, because while you're filling these up, right, since they're so common, or at least most of the coins in the series are so common, you kind of feel like the sense of accomplishment. It's like, wow, I filled in, like, Washington State, which I didn't have last week, right? While, let's say, if you were to delve into like the silver coins and you just want to start collecting silver coins right right off the bat, you know, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to find silver coins or at least buy silver coins. And your collection would kind of start off slowly, which might discourage you from continuing, right? And, you know, just like, just take baby steps. You know, start with clad which is cheap. You don't have to pay money to obtain or fill these books. You just go to your normal bank, your Wells Fargo, Chase, America, whichever one you want, and just you know exchange ten dollars for it. Fill up these albums. See whether or not you are actually enjoying the hobby. And if you are, then you can maybe go the next step. Start with bank strap, um, bank note hunting. You know, just have fun with it. It's Oh, and this is the most important, uh, having fun with it. Don't try and right off the bat look for a way to make profit off this. If you're doing this just out of profit, you're not going to have too much fun, right? The profit will come eventually once you have your fun with it because once you start upgrading from your beginner stuff, like once you start like completing these and you're like, okay, I want to take it to the next step. Let's start collecting. Let's say, for example... Um, half dollars, silver half dollars, like Benjamin Franklin's or Walking Liberties, JFK's, you know, or maybe even older than that, Morgan dollars, anything else, you know, you'll start um, realizing like uh, silver prices, numismatic value, how to store those more like precious coins, and you'll eventually find that out. But if you're just beginning, I highly recommend just starting off like this, you know, small, cheap, at the most, you know, your normal Barnes and Noble book, like this one, since it's a bit bigger, um, this one will probably cost you $10, but for example, I bought some penny one, penny albums, and they cost like five bucks each at Barnes and Noble, so if you just want to start, you can dish out $10 in albums, maybe 20 if you really feel like it, and then the rest you can do little by little like five dollars a week in pennies or ten dollars a week in pennies that won't really take away too much from your average income right 
and it's pretty fun you know once you begin collecting you're filling in your albums yeah it's pretty nice well yep this is the end of the first part hopefully I'll be able to I guess film the second part sooner or later so yeah see you later